Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hayes' Higher Learning. I am your host, Ashley Hayes, and it is so good to be back with y'all. I haven't been on um, broadcasting in about two months, and I'm going to keep it a bug. These past couple months have been really, really trying for me. But here we are at season three, and welcome. I had so many plans, y'all, including having a longer season two, but that didn't make sense to me because I was going to talk to you all about a touring business model market. And the touring market simply isn't operating right now. So this season, we're going to go a different direction. And hopefully we get to get back to that touring material next year. And as you all know, everybody's normals and everybody's plans have been changed and rearranged with COVID-19 being declared a pandemic back in March. And so we are now in June and I feel like I'm just getting a grip on what that means for Ashley Hayes and what that means for Hayes' higher learning. And as if that wasn't enough, being in the middle of a pandemic, we also have increased violence against Black people and the public being outraged. In the middle of a pandemic, people are now having to fight for justice and for reform on a national level. And so this episode is going to be about where I am now, my personal routine, and what you can look forward to this season. So let's start with where I am now. I thought I would have been on tour until May, but I have been working from home and I have not been on a plane for three months now. I think it has been the most difficult thing for me because I am a traveler who cannot travel. And so I spent the last three months just nesting and really getting acquainted with my home again because I spend so much time in hotels and in different cities and in Airbnbs. And so I got a new plant and I even made a little desk nook in my room for me to write and record. I'm used to setting up shop in hotels and coffee shops, but I'm now making so much more of my own food and spending so much more time at home, as I'm sure many folks are. So I'm making spaces within spaces. I'm an Aquarius, so my creative energy needs a lot of space to move around. And so that means I'm now moving through the house throughout the day and then playing music to create dimensions in my space instead of just leaving. I'm so used to going up the street to a local coffee house or going to a co-work space. And of course, none of that is really able to happen right now, at least not safely. And so I finally hooked up my little Black Friday Bluetooth speaker in my room and I finally dug up my way to my kettlebell and I'm going to use them. Um, I bought a bike. I go to the Beltline very early because people are still gathering a lot. Um, and I know some people are back at the gym. That still seems very risky to me. So if y'all can find outdoor activities to get your workout in or workout at home, please do that. I've seen a lot of people gathering. And if you are out there, I would really like to hear... Um, why you're choosing to gather or why you're choosing to go outside, um, feel free to leave me a message on Anchor. You can click the link right in this episode. And I'm working really hard not to judge folks who aren't social dis distancing, especially those who forego it to rally and to protest, which I think is essential work. And if you have information about why easing social distancing may be safe or necessary or any other viewpoint about it, I really want to hear it. I don't want to talk to myself this season, y'all. I want to have conversations and increase dialogue around this collective complications that we're experiencing. So holla at me. Feel free to hit me on Instagram at Hayes' Higher Learning or even email me at Hayes' Higher Learning. Well, it's actually higher learning at ashleyhayes.com. I also suffered a loss this spring, y'all. April 23rd, I lost my bonus mom, Sharon Williams, to cancer. I had the pleasure of knowing her and my sister, Chanel, since I was 10 years old. And she was in my life, really, up until the point that she passed. She was the one who dropped me off at college. She used to tag team with my dad, taking me and Chanel to our little Pizza Hut jobs in high school. I spent some time in Charlotte helping my sister process that transition and trying to help her figure out a new normal. And thank you to everyone who sent condolences and who supported her GoFundMe. Um, my community really showed up for me during that time. And that was really dope. And I'm super grateful to have had y'all. And so let's see, what else? Going to the grocery store has been the social event of the season, season for me. I go early. And if I see a line, I usually will try another day. I've also been attending some really dope online workshops and curated poetry readings. I'm hosting a writing workshop every Wednesday 
Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on the Ashley Hayes Instagram page as a way to effectively cope with stress and as a form to sort of process our emotions through art. I'm in a cooking group with my homies on Facebook, and I'm also learning how to use TikTok. I feel like I'm too old for that, but I mean, it's out there. It's dope. And I've been seeing some really dope stuff done on there. Um, When I'm not doing those things, I am usually reading or watching a docuseries or watching guys' grocery games on the Food Network. There are 28 seasons of that. So if you find yourself bored out of your mind or needing a break, I highly recommend guys' grocery games. And I'm also very much missing people and missing physical connection, but I am connecting with myself and others through art, and that is keeping me going. I also want to say that I've changed my relationship with cannabis during this, and I think I'm going to do an episode on cannabis education this season because it really has been a major key for me during this adjustment period, and I want us to have informed and empowered interactions with everything our lives, and that includes everything in our lives, and that includes cannabis. I've also been meeting with my therapist remotely, and that has also contributed to how well I would say that I have been coping recently. Um, If you have the means, please, please consider virtual therapy if you need it. Taraji P. Henson had a really amazing campaign to offer free and discounted mental health services. And y'all, we need to be mindful of our mental health as well as our physical health in trying to survive this COVID-19 pandemic. We are highly social generally, and so whether it's connecting with our coworkers or even seeing your friends or working in public during the day, feel free to grieve those connections that you miss. I am grieving a lot of connections, and that's work that I'm constantly doing. Speaking of mixed connections, if you remember in season one, um, and our Learn to Leave the Table episode, I talked about a certain suitor who ghosted, and that suitor has since apologized and been accountable for the ways in which they showed up. And so we have decided to be friends and to cultivate a new version of that relationship, and I'm excited about those possibilities. And I think it's fair and important for me to say and address that here, that with grace and with accountability, we do have the opportunity to return to the table and to restore love where it was lost, as I say, and I'm man. And I also saw that parallel happening in this season of Insecure with both Lawrence and Issa reconnecting, and then also Issa connecting with Nathan, who ghosted, but managing to keep very good boundaries otherwise. And I, I will probably do an episode on what that means to see representation of problems that I encounter and to be able to see that. I appreciate the work that Issa Rae has been doing um, and continues to do. And I also think that I would, because I was missing connections so much and missing people, I was available for a lot of gigs um, and to a lot of conversations that I'm probably going to have to not be available for. I'm going to have to do a better job at budgeting and allocating my time differently this summer because working exclusively from home is a different ball game. And so I I'll be working to create some accessible content this summer, including more conversations on relationships and current events. And I'll be really intentional with my virtual engagement. Remember, Hayes' Higher Learning teaches balance. I'm figuring out how to manage um, and balance consuming media and producing it because I've still been able to produce content, the balance between spending time with my family and friends, and also really taking advantage of this opportunity for solitude. I don't know what my creativity and production levels will be in three or even six months or if creative business will still make sense then. I don't know what the market will look like or what means I'll have to produce content. And so I don't want anyone to hear me talk about my plans and think that I'm telling you to do something different. Find a normal that works for you. My career is art, so it feels most normal to me to create and produce. I don't have kids, so I choose to go cultivate my craft. No truth is more valuable than the other. If you're suddenly faced with working from home and being a homeschool teacher and now trying to feed little people all day. That is tough shit. Be gracious with yourself and others. Don't feel like you have to produce or create. Remember, remember though, to advocate for public education workers and to bless them when you get the chance and let them know how valuable that work is. And that goes for both the teachers and the lunch ladies and the janitors and everyone who works to make lives better for children during their school day. 
If you're using your energy to survive and just try to keep your mental health good, do that. If art helps you do that, cool. If not, let's figure out what works. If you need help, I hope you feel comfortable asking for it. Um, I have noticed that even in the midst of calamity and a pandemic, folks I have come in contact with still have a high capacity for love and still have a high capacity for partnership. So let's help each other through this. I've been asking folks to support me by sharing my work, buying merchandise, booking me for a virtual gig, booking me as a private coach or an arts business nonprofit consultant, hiring me to write or produce, supporting me via Patreon, and even one-time gifts. Um, and you can learn more about how you can support Ashley Hayes and Hayes is Higher Learning at ashleyhayes.com slash Hayes is Higher Learning and ashleyhayes.com slash support. Um, I've been listening to some dope podcasts, including the You Good Bruh podcast, um, and that actually centers conversation on Black men's mental health and the Science of Happiness podcast, Therapy for Black Girls, and I really do like Unlocking Us with Brene Brown. I listened to her two-part episode on how to apologize, and it was so helpful to me. She's also got an episode on how to be an anti-racist with Ibrahim X. Kendi that is worth listening to and worth sharing. I've also been applying to programs to get funding. I've applied for unemployment and I've been eligible for about 13 weeks worth. And I was fortunate enough to get paycheck protection from the Small Business Association through my bank, which covers me and my creative director's payroll until the end of July. So I don't know what will happen after that, but right now we're good. Um, Alvin and I are good. And if you have any recommendations or resources, please send them. Um, if you were running a creative business last year, the best thing you can do is keep good records. File your tax returns and apply for help. Don't assume that you're ineligible for these programs. Apply and then let them determine your your eligibility. If the fine print doesn't make sense to you and you need help understanding something or understanding all these pro um, programs like paycheck protection, unemployment, holla at me. I don't mind helping you. Even if you didn't work a full-time job last year, you still may be eligible for pandemic unemployment assistance through your local unemployment office. In Georgia, it took about seven weeks from the time I applied to the time I got approved. And they had to actually deny me the regular unemployment and then approve for um, pandemic unemployment assistance. So it has been a process. I know some people are still waiting to hear back from the unemployment offices. They're understaffed and they're not opening their lobby. So be patient with the process if you can. Um, and there are resources out there to help in the meantime, in between time. But if your company got paycheck protection, they need to use that money on payroll or they have to pay it back. So most people are finding that they can't do both. And some folks are going to go back to work sooner than they thought. Explore your options and do what's best for you. It's rough when you have to choose between protecting yourself from the virus and making a living. There are some cool artist grants out there. Unfortunately, in most cases, the amount of applications exceeds the amount of funding available. So apply early, apply thoroughly, and apply often. One of the most popular funds that the artist, um, the artist resource grant said they got 50,000 applications and could only only make 500 awards. So don't assume that your artist friends are doing well or we're balling. Some artists, including actors and anyone else who relies on public engagement in theaters are suddenly out of work for what appears to look like a year or more. And we don't know what that market will even look like after that. So support as often as you can. Most of us are doing virtual work for a fraction of our usual income or even for free. If you're consuming art, please find sustainable ways to support your local artists. Artists, I'll be talking about other ways we can find fulfillment and also make a living this season. This season, I'm going to do something a little different, and I'm going to give you all the syllabus. This season on Hayes' Higher Learning, we will be shifting from the self-mastery work and the work around business and touring um, to more social justice work and for more business work for creatives. Um, our next episode will be in conversation with Denver Terrence, the founder of the Denver Smith Foundation. We'll be discussing social inequity, the long-term systemic effects of police brutality, and a proposition for social justice 
justice. And Denver um, actually started the Create Change campaign, which takes all the plywood that has been placed outside of businesses and places art that is representative of people, um, victims of police brutality. It's a really dope project. So tune in next time. We'll talk to Denver about that. Next, after that, we have Mia Willis in conversation about being a poet and what social justice looks like in art. Then we'll get into effective communication and managing conflict. I have had to lean into some tough conversations with the people closest to me since this all started. And having the tools to communicate effectively has helped me through that. We are also in a media climate of constant engagement and conversation. So I'll be sharing tools on how to place boundaries around your energy. Then my partner Pam is back this season in conversation about Black love in the midst of the revolution. After that, we'll talk intellectual property and monetizing existing content with special guest intellectual property attorney Ed Lance. We'll talk about licensing and how you can make royalties at home, but also how racism shows up in contracts and royalties. Um, Then we'll talk about managing virtual production and conducting virtual business and best practices with my manager, Michael Pavlov. Then I'm working on an episode about unlocking cannabis with some enthusiasts and consultants. Then we'll have creative time management and organization with my creative director, Ian A. Lewis of Mr. Lewis Studios. And I'm probably going to do a cooking and baking episode um, just to make sure we have our extracurriculars covered because I have been cooking my little behind off and it has been really fun. And I'm going to leave room for you all to let me know what you want to learn. That's part of why I joined Anchor, so that you could talk to me, you can leave me a message, and I can teach you what you want to know. So holler at me. This is a cooperative learning space, and I want to make sure that you get what you need here. If you have a question that you've been waiting to ask an intellectual property lawyer, go ahead and leave it on Anchor, um, and I can forward that to Mr. Lance. If you have a question that you've been wanting to ask an architect, go ahead and leave me a voicemail, and I can forward that to Denver. If you want to ask about being a full-time poet, go ahead and ask that question. I can forward to um, Mia. If you have questions about partnership, ask me and I can forward you to Pam. Um, That's why I have these folks on so that they can help my community in the ways that they have helped me. And so that we can continue to build this cooperative space where we talk to each other. I am refreshed and excited for season three of Hayes' Higher Learning. Um, Hayes' Higher Learning was a passion project for me that I started almost two years ago now. It started with me teaching arts um, at poetry slams and conferences, and I still very much love this work. Um, It still means so much to me to operate Hayes' Higher Learning. So I hope I will see you all over the next few episodes. Thank you for rocking with me. The song of the week is Sandstorm by Mariba and Jid. I have been sweating this song um, since since I heard it on my morning rides. I listened to it. I hope you all enjoy that song. You can stream it on Spotify, wherever else. Um, Thank you all so much for joining me on the journey. Thank you for tuning into Hayes' Higher Learning, where together we are learning better, doing better, and being better. I hope you all have a wonderful week.